the whole thing in Virginia about being a Republican is like, if you're a Republican, you're kind of a racist guy. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the um, stereotype, but Democrat, you know, Democratic Virginians, you know, we're talking Tim Kaine here. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, really? That's the best you could come up with? So. But there's also a huge difference between the politicians in those states and then the people that call themselves that in that they're oh, the absolutely. You absolutely. know, I mean, like you see that here with the Republicans. The Republicans here are like, uh, I mean, Democrats, they're, I mean, well, I mean, they're nothing. They're just, they just say, well, okay, whatever you say, uh, you know, I'll sign it, you know, but the Republicans, it's like, you know, they say these things that totally contradict the people that vote for them. Like, it blows my mind, you know, like these people, they want jobs. These people aren't going to give them jobs. These people want, you know, their pensions and their health care. They ain't going to give that to them, you know? I mean, they, they rail against it all the time. It's just like, but they still keep getting the vote somehow. Uh, well, uh, yeah, it happens to both. It happens to both sides of the aisle, Republicans oh, and yeah. Democrats. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. It's just you know, they're they're selling they're selling the goods, and the second that you give them your money, they don't give a crap. They'll give you a shit sandwich, you know. And what what recourse do you have? It's like you have a shit sandwich you got to eat for four years, basically. <laughs> it's not like you can bring it back to you know to McDonald's or whatever and have it redone for you. You have this for you know you have this for four years now, and they don't you know the instant they get in they don't care. So I don't know yeah, how much I'm, they care anymore. I'm wondering maybe uh, Evan, you can you can uh, work your magic on on Paula Jean. Maybe get her on here. Oh yeah, I'd love to have her on. Uh, I, I'm just kind of sometimes worried with certain people that they they don't want to come on. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, uh, it never hurts to ask. I mean, I asked. I yeah. at the time I only had like 70, 70 people or sixty people, something like that. And she told me to go through her media company, and I did. And they they were like, <laughs> but if yeah. you know if you did it and you say, hey, I'm from Candlelight Media, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, if they watched our stuff, I don't know because <laughs> we do a lot of well, we do a lot of criticism. Well, yeah, much. yeah. But I mean, when when they if they if they see our interviews, especially with candidates and just other right. people, we just listen. We let them talk. Right. We follow the conversation. We give our points. We don't ridicule them. I mean, we might ridicule them. <laughs> <laughs> like the bigger, you know, media personnel, the head honchos, we, we don't really punch low. We punch high. Right. So I think they, they kind of would understand that. But we're kind of like the three stooges. We punch low, but we punch low at ourselves. <laughs> and, um, and so candlelight media is what I'm trying to do. And I think it's hard. I think when we get hit by litigation, it can be tough because, it's just a way, entryway into the into the media world, the coverage world. Like, for right. example, um, to get Tim Black into the People's Summit, they have okay, what what organization, what uh, media co organization are you are you representing, and what state, etc. So he can put down Candlelight Media, or no, it was Bright Path Media then, right. and then so I created Candlelight Media, the same concept. For anyone, uh, like for example, if I were to do it, I'd have to use uh, Candlelight Media to get uh, um, Dr. Shiva on his website. It had what what media co company are you are you are you? Um, and also Amanda, if so, she was going to something in Puget Sound. Amanda, you're gonna have to come on here and explain it. And they they pretty much couldn't get in. So they kind of canceled their trip, but basically they could have gotten in just by using Candlelight Media as the media company to get in and film the event and see what's going on on the inside. There are two things that I'll probably, um, I'll probably definitely go to. Uh, one is the Left Forum that happens every year in June, um, and that's how I met. That's how I met Jamal actually. And what I want to do is I want to look at particular 
um, events. Um, see if I can see if I can even you know film stuff. I don't or how you know how that goes, and I might need some help you know with like a handheld. But um, and then the anti-war summit. Um, yeah. But it gets to a point if something is so big and so um, publicized. Um, LB the realist, he he did a very quick thing on how people get so big they get so big that they don't share and by the way he he uh put some shine on me as he says he gave me a uh, mention in the in that uh but it's like he's awesome his videos are good yeah if he um if it's so publicized how valid is it the people summit i i kind of raised an eyebrow to it and after it happened i was like "Uh, i don't know I mean, I'm kind of glad that I didn't really follow it too much just because it just seemed like a propaganda thing. Yeah. But, 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 but that's why it's important to get smaller media outlets that'll film behind the scenes because you got two things. You got what's on stage ready for the mass right. consumption and right. you got the backstage. What, what are they actually talking about, saying, doing? Sh- shining the light on what the actual message is. Yeah. 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 Hey, Tech Move, how's it going? We really should have him on. Who, LB? We we need to get him on. He's Mm. seems like he'd be a good interview. He seems like he would interact with a a lot of our folks. Um, I will I will give him. I actually uh, gave him a tweet, um, retweeting a link to this Zoom just for the hell of it. Um, to see if he would even uh, look at it. And I don't know if he watched some of it, but he did re- uh, like it, and I believe he retweeted it. So he's he's aware of us, and he's aware of me and Red and, you know, and Bond. Where, so. David, where is he from? Is he from California? He's from California. I got yep. that. Who is this? Uh, LB, the realist. Oh, his, yeah. I love him. Yeah, his <laughs> stuff is really straightforward. He's uh, He's sharp. Yeah. And and uh, it's also great to get not just these interviews because I feel like I'm just uh, I'm not a good host really. No, but, but Yvonne, you got a really good interviewing style though. You do. You were great with Shiva. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't add entertainment value. I just kind of let them talk and try to move to some something that I see. But it's not like uh, it's relaxed, man. And I think people people pick up on that vibe though. It's a good thing. Okay. Yeah, I, that's what I dig about it. Like how you do your um, uh, interviews and stuff. It's like this. It's not an interview. It's not like a series of questions and an interrogation. It's a conversation, mm-hmm. and it's more of a back and forth. And when people when people can do that, they can they can talk. They can actually say you know the truth, what's on their mind, and actually get to the you know root of some of this stuff. I mean, you're not you're not you're you're not really out there. Uh, doing your research, uh, trying to turn yourself into trying to think of the guy, the hit man he used to be on 60 minutes. Can't think of his name. Cause the only one's coming to my mind is Dan rather. And I know he was on there for a while, but he was more like their lead news man. Yeah. With 60 You're minutes, not talking about Ed Bradley is the other guy that I can uh, think of. No, I'm talking about the old guy that was, Oh, Oh, Oh yeah. I know the guy did. that's been around was there and around forever. Um, I'm the only thing that's coming to my mind right now is he was the reason I'm bringing that up, Yvonne, is those guys get into their interviews and then they're always looking to gotcha. Yeah, you know, always looking to get that gotcha in there. And he, this guy was like the guy I'm thinking of. I can't think of his name. He's a classic gotcha. Yeah, yeah. He, the the, 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 close, the the close up face in 60 minutes, like every interview, like that. Right. Yeah. But that, but that's also what gets the views, and that but I see that as a problem, um, because well, it depends on where you're going with it. You know, yeah. if you want to build, you know, if you wanted to build your uh, cred, I'm not for some reason the words aren't coming to me. Today. <laughs> cred. Uh, but it, I I just had a piece of pizza, and my lips are TM, like, TM the realist. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. No, don't shut up. 
uh, I think uh, uh, Fly Fly has a good has a good system with <laughs> with Decipher U, <coughs> and that you create these small bits of information, and you edit. You know, you edit the conversation and like with my with my discussion about, you know, child abuse, you have that five minute blip, you get your your get your point across, but it's conversational and you have people who edit, you know, whatever you, you know, whatever you're speaking of, yeah. uh, whether it be, you know, the media, you, you, you have small two minute, three minute clips within a long conversation and that. That is an effective tool, I believe, too. Instead of like trying to get, because the whole gotcha thing to me is fake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is. Uh, did you or did you not? Uh, shut up. And you said you had just opened it up. <laughs> so Yvonne. you're trying to say. Right. right. <laughs> and you had just opened it up, Yvonne, because you were thinking, well, I don't know if that interviewing style is, you know, and you were kind of implying that you had this question in your mind. Right. what a good interviewing style was. So I thought, would you really want to go full 60 minutes on some of these people? Do you or do you not believe the appropriate, you know? Yeah. Right. I, I mean, uh, when I have more time, I'll probably do the same thing. Uh, like the average time that you want to hit is like the 10 minute part. At, yeah, just, at most. Don't have the, the attention span to really go these long spell sessions unless you're crazy like everyone else that watches right now. That makes us that makes us all crazy, right? Because we're, yeah. in, we're into this. We're when crazy. I get like really pissed off, I do like a fifteen minute thing. I'm just like, all right, guys, I'm pissed off. Just let me go. You know, I don't mind if you you know bail in the middle of this, but I do that. Wow. You know, but it, it, sometimes but, you just can't stop. But editing is is key. I think. I think the editing is key, and. I thought, though, Yvonne, correct me if I'm wrong on this, isn't our stuff kind of like uh, open license? What do you mean open license? We should, shouldn't we be able to uh, remix and edit this stuff? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. for my content, feel free. Do whatever you want. If you just that want to the- make yeah. a compilation of me talking about doodle stuff, you guys can go ahead and do that. I won't stop you. <laughs> Have been taken out of context. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, but yeah, some other people they it they take sell, it. It would only sell in our chat, of course. Yeah. Rainbow Nazi flags. <laughs> hey, I, I still like that one. Uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, some people take it very seriously as far as you know. They're even their YouTube content, like they see it and they go, "Nah, you shouldn't do that," and then they'll put in like a stop order or uh, tell you to or you know do that thing on youtube where they they try to take it down um all the strikes the strikes I have this yeah. really bad habit i have this really bad habit because i'm um in fact over on steam it that's how i'm kind of presenting myself now as a as a remixer so that's kind of what i'm going to do for content is I've got some access to content and I'm looking at, you know, some creative common stuff and, you know, different places where I can get like uh, open licensed stuff. And then if I edit it and put it down, you know, um, YouTube, of course, frowns on that, you know, but I put like the few videos that I've done, you know, where I've actually cut little bits and pieces out of well i've done it with uh with lee camp's show and i've done it with a couple of tv shows that i watched that if something happens and i cut a clip out of them then if i was to put that up somewhere i would put the licensing info in there and i know this is probably illegal as hell you know it's oh, probably yes i came probably in DEC- it's probably decma you know, oriented to where, you know, they'd come after me, but I don't care. I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. Cause the stuff that I'm putting up means something to me. Yeah. And, and on, on the whole thing with like editing, I mean, you see what fly does with um, like Susie uh, Dawson's, her 
yeah. live streams that she does. I mean, with, I mean, sometimes they're on there, what, three, four hours, but he takes it. And, and, and that's the thing, like, um, you know, when I first started getting into YouTube, I didn't, I didn't, I used to never watch YouTube. But then when it came to politics, I found it was like the easiest way to be able to work and then still listen and get caught up on the news. So, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't have, you know, three or four hours. Most people don't, but, you know, Fly takes it and he clips it down into these like, you know, segments that you can get through piece by piece. And, um, uh, Dave, you did that with one of yours, didn't you? With one of your interviews, you broke that, I forget, was it, uh, Seema? No, it was, no, it was the, um, it was the Pauline video. And we did that out of necessity because of our, you know, because of our snicker troll, but, it it is it is a good thing to do because if you have a three hour interview, most you break it look, down. yeah, most people look at that and go, nah, right. no way. Yeah, and um, I mean they've done research, of course, on this stuff, and it's was it the average attention span on on YouTube? If you see a video that's over what five to seven minutes, most people won't even bother clicking on it. Um, you know? Well, yeah. Yeah. it's education theory too. You figure. Yeah. How how long is someone's attention span going to be able to hold? Uh, how long should you have a lesson for? And the longest, even for you know higher grades, it's probably 30, 40 minutes at most. Yeah. And then you have your activity or whatever. So uh, and you have your hook, you have you have the meat of the, the thing, and then and then you have the interaction. Yeah, but but also also I think it's different content. For example, interviews I think you can expect people to tune in for thirty minutes to an hour. If it's some type of uh, discussion, like a specific uh, issue or right. event that that's being covered, I think ten minutes will work. And a lot of it has to do with uh, they could just listen in. You you don't have to worry like commentary. Ten minutes is a good time. But then if you want something like uh, you want to do like a presentation, five, six minutes and a lot of visuals where you get them just to tune in and just see everything visually and just whatever music or sound effects. And they're just tuned. It's like a commercial, right? Sometimes like my wife does it all the time. She sees a commercial. She's like reading her book, playing on her iPad, Facebook while the show is on. And then a commercial comes on and she just looks and she stares at it like she's hypnotized. That's, that's how the hook. That's, yeah, the, that's music the hook, hook or the visual hook or yep. audio hook. music, yeah. all this other stuff. Yep. Yep. It's so, also a word. I mean, right now, it depends on the content and the timing of when a, a clip comes out too, because I um, I am actively looking also for the history of FISA. And a lot of people are coming out with the history of FISA um, videos now, which typically are any, anywhere from like 30, 30 minutes to 40 minutes is fine because you can't, you can't explain FISA in five to 10 minutes. No way. There's no way. Yeah. So if you're interested in a topic, I would say 40, yeah, 40 minutes stops or break it down. Break it down in different segments, part two, part one, part two. Just as a side note, we need to talk, Dave, because I got hit with some stuff on FISA over the weekend, and I had to do some deep diving, and that stuff, historically, we're going back to 1978. Yeah, we're going back <laughs> even before that, because you got to know what Hoover did, wiretapping these folks. Um, my, my thing Crazy. there is that, the big, the big scandal for me there is who is the one president, the one president that we still had hope for historically. For me, it was Carter. This whole thing happened around 19, <laughs> around his administration. So where was he? You know, where was he on this whole thing? Was he either telling, clueless he was or telling was he everybody not? to uh, turn down their thermostats? Right, <laughs> right. No, I lived through it, man. I remember sort yeah. of. Yeah. I was too friggin' young. What what's up, CV? Thought you were gonna say something. Well, Lucas. Rainway. But Hello. Have hey, you, did, Lucas. You, did you guys see the stock market tank six hundred and sixty six points on Friday and then fourteen hundred today? I thought it was seventeen hundred, yeah. but yeah. So what is that telling us? Seventeen hundred today, yeah. 
So what is that telling us? Um, I think that that was a reaction to the Super Bowl, actually. <laughs> People at the drop before Friday, though, or the drop on Friday, though. Um, I, I don't know what that was about. Maybe um, I have no idea. I don't know what that would be in reaction to. My mom works at Everett Jones and like, so she's in the full financial bubble of like people who think that everything's, you know, fine and dandy and going along just fine. So I asked her what she thought it was. And she was saying that, you know, everything's overvalued. So a correction was bound to happen. Now she doesn't think the correction is going to be as big as I'm, you know, 99% sure it's going to be. Cause like, I'm, this is just like stuff I research all the time. And yes, she works in it, but she gets all her news from mainstream sources like MSN and stuff. And, uh, but she was saying that, uh, a lot of this is because of, um, people who think the economy is doing re- like a lot of the people who think the economy is doing really well right now. And that we're at a high point. Everyone's like, Oh, we're doing the best. I'm not going to make any more money. This so I should sell now. Ah, okay. But see, what was it? Uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, they were just setting the uh, a month ago. They were just setting the all time highs. Well, Bitcoin, you know I think the only well, thing, thing that i've seen so far is interest rates interest rates have snuck up a little bit yeah well and that's what that's another that's another reason i forgot that's another reason that people are buying is because they're afraid the interest rates are going to go up they're so they're pulling out and selling yeah um i'm i'm finding it interesting though you mentioned lucas uh your mother works for jones edward jones yes Uh, is she a broker is she a boa She's the person who works in the front and does all the work and gets gets uh, half the pay. She's a BOA, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I used to service computers for uh, Jones. Oh, okay. Spent ten years with them. Yeah, that was where I got my first computer monitor. It was because they were throwing out all their old stuff to get new stuff, and they gave and they gave it to the BOA. So my mom got a couple of computer, mo- a couple uh, crappy computer monitors that were ten years old. So that was my first computer monitor. It was probably stuff we were, uh, yeah, we were uninstalling. Yep. But I'm just, I'm just wondering, you know, if this is going to keep on going and if, you know, cause if it does, that sucks. But at the same time, I'll finally be able to look at everyone around me who's been calling me crazy and say, look, I was right. I may be crazy, but I'm still right. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, my, my question is, do you think that, uh, Bitcoin, has any relationship to the economic uh, position? Like when when the Dow drops or NASDAQ drops, is Bitcoin gonna naturally drop or does it not matter at all? It's just all over the place. Cause I, I, heard, I heard Bitcoin fell again today. Yeah, all the cryptocurrencies falling, that's cause the big players are trying to, in my opinion, uh, crash it. Okay. But the ones right. who, who really are, think cryptocurrency um, is going to be a game changer so that the big banks don't own everything and control the money. Uh, and what, uh, I mean, they, a lot of cryptocurrency, there's a big debate on whether they want to detach themselves from Bitcoin and have their own um, be a standalone cryptocurrency. Cause the thing with, with staying with Bitcoin is if Bitcoin goes up, they go up. If Bitcoin right. goes down, they go down. But then they're also, everything is based off of just exchanges and not necessarily being on their own. So there's there's a lot involved, but the ones who are just, that are causing these big, huge ups and downfalls is because millions. Manipulation of the market. Hundreds of millions are being, yeah, manipulated. So, so. it's a candlelight media is candlelight media going to have a snort coin or redneck coin and nope. IO coin? There, there is a coin that I am building once okay. I move to Nebraska. Okay. And I mentioned it before in the past. And right. I'll mention it again in the future. <laughs> I remember being on Reddit and there was a there was a guy who had talked another guy out of suicide on Reddit or helped him get help or something like that. And the, and then someone awarded that that guy a type of cryptocurrency called a Dogecoin. And this was like five years ago. And then now that guy went, got back on and realized he had that Dogecoin. He didn't even know he had it this whole time. That Dogecoin was now worth like ten thousand dollars. But is that stuff even traded? I don't think it's traded on these, uh, like the New York exchanges or whatnot. Are they are are the cryptocurrencies listed at all that way? I don't think so. I thought no. they were alternative. It's all alternative. 
and they're yeah. only yeah you had to go there's like maybe at least 10 i mean different exchanges that you can go to you can even exchange it on certain wallets uh and like for example um oh, why can't i remember it but yeah i mean it's it's you exchange it different places basically yeah. Yeah. And certain but, coins aren't accepted in certain exchanges yet, but some but, are. So even if we were using block, uh, if, even if we were using, uh, oh God, I can't even think of the name. As an example, whether they're even integrated into our conventional stock exchanges, you know, uh, bond exchanges, that kind of thing. As far as I'm, as far as I know, they're not. They're they're independent entities. So that yeah, and really, that really has no effect on, you know, whether the Dow is going to tank or not. Yeah, it, it has nothing to do with the, the U.S. stock market. It's right, right. Uh, the thing is, man, the manipulation of the stock market. They, the higher ups, want things to crash because that's how they make money. Because they're going to speculate on that. Yeah. Yeah, because. The best way to make money is for a crash to happen in the stock market. Then you just buy up a lot of stocks of things that that you know have millions of dollars into it. I mean, they're basically anytime as aside from the internet boom and crash, uh, like Apple, you don't see Apple is never if a crash happens that they're just going to go out of business bankrupt. Same thing with like Nvidia or. Uh, Goldman Sachs or or whatever, if a crash happens or Microsoft, if a crash happens, buy up at the lowest low and they're going to go back up again. Yeah. So there's no worry that you're going to lose all your money. But the thing is, when a crash happens, the people who don't have a lot of wealth, uh, capital, where they could stay alive during a downturn, they're going to sell because they're worried. And that's where all these people make their money. Uh, these wealthy people yeah. is when people get so scared they're like oh no money's gonna be worth nothing yeah. well it's gonna be worth they're selling it for like uh nickels and dimes what they put in yeah they just wasted a lot all their money well the thing about the rich people wanting it to crash is that because they don't know their history like if they really you know knew their history they would they would not want it to crash because that's that's when the rich people you know jump, run out and jump out windows or they lose their heads you know like especially with the current state of our country you know in 2007 to 8 when if we had the crash that didn't happen because Barack Obama did everything he could to make sure that the crash was put off and you know and it happened slowly in stages so instead of everyone getting kicked out of their house at once you know, people were kicked out of their houses over the course of eight years. And, you know, before houses were foreclosed on over the period of eight years. And they put a Band-Aid on the housing bubble to keep it from bursting, you know, from bursting fully. Like it burst in some places temporarily. But then, you know, he invested a bunch of money into the fracking booms and the carbon bubble. So that would push the housing and rent prices back up. Yeah. The, the ones, there's a yeah. lot to it. The ones who, who <laughs> kill themselves because they lost everything is because they put everything into one basket. They diversified. It wouldn't matter. They could, they could, they could battle the storm and outlast the storm, and they'd be all right. I, I think that's insane. Why would anyone do any of that kind of thing? It makes no sense to to put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, not, because, well, not today. This is how you're raised. If you're raised in a really insulated bubble, you know, where you've never had to see the harshness of the world, right. then you're not know about it like you know most of those people who grew up and jumped out of windows were people who grew up in the roaring 20s you know great gatsby level parties right. never had air in the world and then all of a sudden all of their wealth is gone tonight like you know or tomorrow or today like they wake up and they read the paper the wealth's gone well before they even put down the paper they're out the window and again or, we're talking historically versus what's right. happening no i thought now. Yeah. i was tuned out for a second i thought you were talking about now i was like but yeah. I, I would imagine, too, that a lot of these people were also family business people who lost everything in their own family business because they were heavily invested because it was their business. You know, it was their family business. You so. look at where your revenue is at. You know, you look at whether you're if you've got enough money uh, set aside or whatnot that you can speculate on stocks or speculate on markets or, you know. What do you invest in? You invest in pennies, penny stocks. Do you invest in 
big time stocks. I mean, there's different schemes. Uh, you know, these these people anymore, especially the rich, I would think, can afford to have economists. You know, personally, personally I I, I, I invest looking for them. I invest in Super uh, Super Bowl halftime shows. Why you guys are talking about crypto? I'm just playing. You you invest in uh, Timberland? In oh my God! Flip? What? Debbie Debbie was singing lost or you know, like really got upset about the whole Prince thing. And personally, I think that that was kind of a slime ball move too, because apparently the family did not sign off on that and did not give him permission. But was if that, you, am I remember? Am I remembering this properly, Dave? Did Prince sort of come up like that was like a uh, um, like a 3D image? Was that how that was projected or? It was projected in a hologram. I don't know. Like, like a hologram? If, hologram? Yeah. If you saw the end of it, there was like a shadow and it it kind of looked like he was if they were trying to make Prince into the symbol, but mm -hmm. it looked demonic. So Debbie was signing, got really upset about that. And in Minneapolis, they did like this Prince symbol thing of in the city, which, you know, it was, it kind of looked cool, but at the same time, it was like, I think that's what they're trying to do. But weren't, it wasn't <laughs> part of that just an homage to the fact that they were in Minnesota. He's from there. That was the pitch. But yeah. the family, the family didn't give permission though, supposedly. Oh, so. Yeah, that's, what that's. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay, but as far as I, I also feel like one out of it. Come on. Right. Well, I also feel like I mean I didn't grow up in the era, you know, when Prince was big. Like I never really knew, heard any of his music until after he passed away, because the steel drum band at my high school did an arrangement of Purple Rain that was really beautiful. Oh, cool. Uh, but great song. Great song. But um, I know that he that he like his entire thing was like fight against the studios because the studios take advantage of the musicians and all that kind of stuff. Right. And Justin Timberlake is one of the most sold out corporate musicians of all time. Well, wasn't so that having them perform together? That it, way, Lucas, what that whole halftime that whole halftime show his entire pre presentation it was just so corporified. It was so horrible. It was really bad. Like that was, you know, I, I, I know that Prince did the Super Bowl once, you know, because like he did and he did like Purple Rain and they had all the names of like, I think, what was it? The 9-11 survivors, right? Or the people who passed away 9-11. They had it all on like the, the projected waterfall or something, right? I think that was it because I think uh, like I was at my grandparents and they were watching like a, a, a throwback of like all the greatest Super Bowl halftime shows or whatever. But uh, I just know that like, his entire career was like, you know, fight against the studios and fight against like the corporate power and all that. And like, you know, be an individual independent musician who's able to sell their stuff and make a living doing what they want to do. And to have him performing with one of the most corporate musicians ever was just like, that is a sickening idea to me. Like that's like a really, that's a way, that's a way to di really disrespect his memory. And like, you know, it's like what they do with Martin Luther King when they, and uh, when they try to like cent make him seem like he was a uh, centrist, you know, and they yeah. try to, like, they try to do like the centrist, uh, uh, like revisionist history, you know, like they're trying to do the same thing with Prince and make it seem like he was a normal corporate musician when in reality he was not. Well, what was that though? Um, during one of the commercials, they used MLK to sell something. I, I saw it yesterday during the Super Bowl. I'll have to think of which commercial. It I was. can't even remember what product they were so selling. What product it was, but they were using MLK. It was a speech that he made in a voiceover, and they were comparing it to, you know, Betty's boobs or whatever it was. And a lot, of, a lot of the lefty. It was, it was very distasteful. It was very a lot, of, a lot of the lefty commercials were tied to like life insurance or or the automotive industry, and I just found it distasteful. Yeah. I like the sign of the really slick college Scientology ad. <laughs> that one got me, or the uh, the avocado ad where everybody was like in that little bubble and everything was great, except that all the chips were on the outside of the bubble and they flipped out. And then they realized that their cell phones lost uh, lost their signal. 
mean, I mean, that's like a really bu- a real big bust on the left. I was wondering if you know, freaking uh, Tom Selleck, Tom Selleck had anything to do with that one. <laughs> yeah, I was watching the um, the the ad this morning, just trying to get caught up with my propaganda, and like it's so it's so creepy and gross when you see these rich, powerful people and corporations try to pretend like they have feelings and cares other than money. You know, it's like, but we care about the struggle. We care about the poor people because, you know, that's why we pay our workers $7 an hour, you know, at least in the USA, maybe just a few pennies in other places, but damn, it's like, you know, I know what you're up to. I know what you're doing. You bought a Super Bowl ad. You ain't regular people. You know, you're not on my level. Like, try Stop trying to pretend. <laughs> well, that's why I get frustrated with my people my age and like my generation when because they, they'll be like, "Oh man, Wendy's Twitter is ba- like really badass and funny and all this kind of stuff," and and, and it makes them want to go eat at Wendy's. And it's like, why would that make you want to go eat at Wendy's? It has nothing to do with their food and how it's made or how good it is or how nutritious it is. It's like just because they p- put funny tweets doesn't mean you should go give them your money. You know, it's like you have no idea how all the awful shit they're doing, like all the worker, all the slave labor that you know produces the meat. All you know, all the pr- prison slave labor that makes the, the that makes the patties and everything. I mean, like all those fast food chains use prison slave labor and immigrant slave labor to produce all of their stuff, and you know, everyone like just ignores that because oh man, Wendy's and Hardee's were really you know roasting each other on Twitter the other day. Then again, the most, that's what we have. You know, mainstream media. Right. The yeah, most they fucked shove up. that stuff down our throats. Yeah. You know, and the older you get, the more you realize, can't I just turn all the commercials off? Right. You know, because I'm done. I'm done filling my head with that crap. Well, I oh, was, and that Tide yeah. commercial was. I know what you're doing, Todd. Like, don't do that. Like, they were just like Todd, Todd, Todd. Like, right in my like, just stop it. It's like that George Bush thing. You know, it's like. Uh, you, you gotta just you gotta say it a few times before the propaganda really kicks in, you know. Right. Evie, come on, we know you use Tide. Yeah, I use like that three dollar Dollar General, like extra. I think it's in Spanish or something. I, I don't even have yeah. like American detergent. She, she uses <laughs> uh, she uses that Camp Chachka uh, vodka to to wash her clothes now. Exactly. But my my <laughs> whole thing, the thing that drove me nuts is Jeff Bezos showing his empathy for Alexa when the machine lost her voice or the Sprint commercial where you're humanizing the AI. I'm starting to see the propagandizing of AI and getting people used to the AI, uh, the idea of AI being part of humanity now. Yeah. There's a, there, was a, there was a push on that yesterday. Big push. Yeah, yeah. It was really... I didn't watch the Super Bowl or the ads, but I've seen that that particular Amazon ad on YouTube before. Like it, it comes up like before I'd watch, you know, music or something, or or watch a Jimmy Dore video or something. Uh, which was funny because the the Jimmy Dore video that it happened to be on was really anti Jeff Bezos and anti Amazon. Um, but yeah, it was that was a really creepy, uh, like Orwellian ad. And it's like here, let's not humanize and laugh at this thing that's spying on you at all hours of the day, listening to every single word you say. I think I was sufficiently distracted yesterday during the Super Bowl because I watched most, I watched all of it, but I think it, I think I might, must've just been distracted or I was just very good with the clicker turning down the audio. So I didn't listen to, you know, a lot of it or whatnot. Uh, Maybe it was the game, the game itself for a Super Bowl. It was a pretty damn good game. Very entertaining. Back oh, the forth. game was good, but I, back I forth, back and forth game. Yeah, but the rest of it, forget it. I was heightened and Debbie was sitting in. Let's you know, let's look at the propaganda horseshit mode. And when that Sprint commercial came on after the game, I looked at it, and the uh, CEO of Sprint, he's talking about integrated AI and how you know we're all going to have like AI all on us and the whole, no, you know, the no. whole new. And wasn't and part of it too, Dave, wasn't it part of it too? What I noticed, because some of it's, it's coming back into my brain now and I don't want it in there, but it's, <laughs> I know, I know. Wasn't some of it, um, 
uh, the VR. I was yes. folks with, yes. you know, with the VR goggles and, yes. and they were going to integrate that. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't need to buy any more of this stuff on my computer screen right now. I can see Dave just fine. I can see Yvonne sitting in his chair. You know, it's all good. I don't need VR for that. Right. Uh, is it just me or do those VR goggles look just totally like the horse blinders? You know, they I they mean, do. like, I love my video games, but come on, like, I, I have to, I have to draw a line somewhere. I mean, if I put goggles on and just, you know, so, uh, that, it's so unsettling to me. Yeah, so, it, it, it's also one of those things. Sorry, Yvonne, I was just going to no finish problem. real quick. Um, with the, with the VR, what about porn? You know, isn't porn going to be better with VR? No. <laughs> doesn't matter. It's an honest question, guys. <laughs> and I'm sure honest I'm, answer doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no. No. Doesn't. But I'm just saying, you know, for some things, you know, and you're still married, Dave. The only thing that I've ever seen, the only good use I've ever seen for VR was in treatment uh, of veterans with PTSD and like who had like phantom limb pain because right. they like read they because they would put them in a VI and like regenerate their limb in the V in the AI and they were able to see their arm again. And for some reason, like that helped their pain go away. Like NPR did a big story on it. And like that's like the only uh, good use I've ever heard really of being like VR, like helping people. I All the uh, just wastes one. of our time and distractions, like just like video games. Think, like, I can't I would, stand games. I would think training in potentially dangerous situations, like training police officers or training firefighters or mm. training hostage negotiators, that kind of thing, it, it could be uh, useful. Uh, I, I did notice, I, I think going to Stevie's point, the, the virtual reality commercial, I believe that right after that commercial came on, that that's when the Budweiser commercial came on where they were, you know, where they were bottle where they were canning water instead of beer. Or did you so, guys, there's an, there was another one too. The one that I picked up on, cause I was looking for some of those, uh, you know, Hey, why don't you get involved with this campaign or that campaign? Right. The only one that I saw was, I think it's Stella, Stella Artois. It's got something going on, and I did. I guess they're a bottle yeah. or a water yeah. bottle, or I'm not sure. And I was going to look into that one. I put a note down to, to look into it, but I've had a, a checkered checkered day today, so to speak. Yeah. Anyway, I'll get to that. I, I want to check that out. The Stellar Thorn, because the water thing, man, you talk about a scary, scary subject matter. You really want and I saw like a really good tweet calling them out on that. It's like you know you spend five what five million on a on a Super Bowl ad to advertise the fact that you spend a hundred thousand on water. Yeah. Yeah. Is that cost effective? I mean, what's the point of philanthropy if you can't brag about it? <laughs> From a Hollywood perspective, exactly, Stevie. No, no redeeming qualities there. Well, I didn't get to my question with uh, Mr. Morse on uh, philanthropy and how his how he feels about it. If it's when is it truly for the greater good, and when is it just a money laundering scheme? I didn't get to that one. <laughs> well, well, when you don't get anything back from it, yeah. I mean, if you follow the money and you see that you're not getting rich off of it, then of course it's philanthropy, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, like. If you think of Bill Gates with uh, his mother's Melinda Gates Foundation that he has for the University of Washington, if you trace the money, see if he gets anything back from University of Washington, et cetera. He does. It's not philanthropy. Right. right? They're buying well, Microsoft, right? They're probably on the side or behind, behind the scenes buying Microsoft. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's totally cut off and it's just money that he gives and he, there's nothing in return, that's philanthropy, I would say. But I mean, I think if if someone a journal, real journalist, not me, <laughs> went and followed uh, where that money went, I'm pretty sure that it's it's it, it comes back in some other form. Well, the thing is that billionaires don't do philanthropy. They do, they do investments that have a charitable uh, c cover on them. So they look charitable 
and they look like they're philanthropic, but in reality, it's just investing in, in themselves. Like they, you know, they'll put that into a charity that they own and that they get money back from, you know, or something like that. Like, I think they've got people advising them that that should be part of their media, their advertising, and it looks good for their PR. So. Especially guys like Gates or people like that where that kind of money we're talking about here, kind of money that Stevie was just throwing out, that's serious jump change. Well, in, in the book, Dark Money, the, the Cokes the directly talk about philanthropy and how, you know, it serves as kind of, it serves a dual purpose. It serves for positive PR while at the same time uh, evading taxes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, that's how, that's, the, their philanthropy is also their foundations. You know, they give all their right. money heritage foundation and all their think tanks right. you know that that are responsible for uh brainwashing america's youth into believing all this conservative bullshit nonsense well, about americans for prosperity i think that was the big one okay, can, yeah can that's guys, one of them can you guys fill me in with a, a quick question about the cokes um lucas just sort of implied that is the heritage foundation that is that the cokes yes See, because mm-hmm. I've always yeah, they're all over the place here. It's one of I've them. Always, I've they always heard about money. the Cokes. Real quick, I, I'm sorry. Um, I've always heard about the Cokes and all their money, and they're so out there, and so many people have done their exposés and whatnot about the Cokes. I didn't realize Heritage Foundation, which is you know one of the best known, most conservative think tanks out there. I didn't realize it was Coke money. Oh yeah, well, almost one hundred percent. Like that's like where they get the majority of their money. I think uh, is the Cokes, and then you know, I think Betsy DeVos gives money to them too, or gave money to them, uh, their family. Right. Yeah, she, the DeVos family is one of their inner circle, actually. Family money. Yeah, so I mean, all all these people are all connected. You know, uh, like if you watch Greg Palace documentary, Best Democracy Money Can Buy, he talks about all the different places the Cokes have their hands in, like. You know, basically, his documentary shows how the Koch brothers, uh, you know, and a few other select billionaires bought the United States political system for like the ten of themselves, and like they and like they are the ones who really make a lot of the decisions. Because like the reason that we have all this Republican uh, legislatures and stuff is because of cross check and gerrymandering, and the money, the way that they did that was using money from the Koch brothers. Now, see, I I, I know about that because I've seen that documentary of Palasts, but I'm gonna have to go back and watch that because maybe maybe he does mention that uh, the Heritage Foundation is the Cokes, but I, I didn't get that out of it. But yeah, I forgot more stuff than I know, so. Yeah, because the one Koch brother, he, there's like his famous quote was like, when asked why he would steal the oil from the Native Americans, he said, I just want my fair share and that's all of it. Was that, was that in Arizona, Lucas? Uh, I'm not. I heard, I heard that, was, that, was, that was how he made his first billion, though, was by ripping off yeah. Native Americans and stealing. He was ripping the- off Native Americans, exactly. But I, I heard it. I, I heard that story and a, another story. The Cokes were threatening an ex-senator, I think, in Arizona, and that's probably why I'm uh, throwing those two data fact streams together. I'll have to go back and see if I can follow up on that it makes me wonder if they had any hand in the gop congressman who who you know air quote killed himself uh air quote uh 30 minutes before the press was supposed to come over back a few years ago because he was gonna do uh like he was running for the governor of missouri i believe because he wanted to get uh all of the corruption like out of the state and he was running in the gop but he was he was more of a progressive republican and, and like his entire platform was like getting rid of the criminals and, you know, getting rid of all the people who are like rich and all that. And he supposedly had a lot of documents that he was going to show to the press that was going to prove uh, corruption inside the government in Washington and in Missouri. And it was going and it was going to be like this big expose. And 30 minutes before the press was going to come over, he killed himself, supposedly. And then there was no investigation. There was no investigation into it. When was this in Missouri? 
Yeah, it was it was the Missouri GOP. I'm sure if you Google uh, Missouri GOP candidate for governor killed, uh, commit suicide, oh, yeah. it'll come up. It was from a few. It was like from 2013 or 14, I think. Were there, um, were there implications that maybe the Cokes were involved with that? Well, I'm just wondering because he was running as a GOP person. So that would mean that he probably had connections to, you know, people who were in, involved with Coke money. It's Coke money uh, on the side, yeah. So I would assume that, you know, they were at least part of the corruption that he was going to talk about. Whether or not they are, you know, paid for like his murder or whatever, I don't, I have no clue, you know, but I wouldn't put it past anyone, you know, with that much money. Like anyone, like literally anyone with that much money, no matter how nice they seem in person, you know, all they would need to do is go find some junkie and say, hey, I'll give you a, you know, like a, a grand that way you can go get all the coke you want or all the heroin you want if you go kill this dude. And the junkie's going to do it because that's all their brain can think about. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a moral to the story. If you have information powerful enough to do an expose, do the fucking expose. Don't announce it. <laughs> you, you, Dorothy Kilgallen, she, she announced that she had groundbreaking news on the JFK assassination, you know, the night, the night that she was killed, she said, tomorrow I'm going to, you know, show the world. Like an hour later, she committed suicide or uh, maybe she OD'd or something like that. And it's like, oh, she OD'd. So do you really think she OD'd? You know, no. and back during that time, of course, they, they don't have, they didn't have the forensics. They didn't have some of the technology like they do now. Um, but do you really think that from, people are going to died from, it would have been easier to cover up. It's but fine. this, this uh, gubernatorial, I, I heard about this guy before, but have, has anybody done real news on this, on this uh, gentleman? Because I'm, they, I don't hear a lot out of Missouri about progressive politics. And it's just because I don't pay a lot of attention, I guess. And I probably should. And, you know, maybe back 10, 12 years ago when I was still working for Jones, uh, maybe I did because Jones is based in St. Louis. But no, I, I'd never heard of anything about that. I, I I'm, only knew Missouri is a swing state, generally speaking. I was thinking of doing a, um, a list like um, starting the month of January to see how many political deaths there were. And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about suspicious death or whatever. Activists, politicians, senators, um, any, anyone. And uh, the, um, the opposition leader in Zimbabwe would be one of them. Anyone who passed away and pay a specific attention to those under a certain age, whether it be 50, 60, whatever. And, and see if there's some kind of, and maybe even look a little deeper and see if there are any connections. Well, my problem is, like I was saying, I've forgotten more than I know now, you know, being old. And I'm trying to track stuff and, you know, but, you know I'm having trouble remembering the Super Bowl commercials, man. And that was yesterday. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. <laughs> So if I get if I get stressed a little bit, or you know I'm out past my bedtime, or you know if I'm off a little bit of my cycle or whatever, who knows? Whatever is causing all this old age more than anything else, um, I can't. I can barely track what's going on conspiracy wise, you know, on the left, you know. And now I got people coming back to me wanting to know what I think about. Russiagate, and I haven't tracked Russiagate for shit, you know. But I still yeah. want to come off as a credible person, right? You know, and 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 maybe try and point in the right direction, you know, and say, why don't you look at this or why don't you look at that? I did I did a quick uh, duck duck search earlier, and all I saw with Russiagate was all mainstream media sources. Now, I know enough now to distrust any of that, you know, but do I have the time and inclination 
to read through all that stuff if it's something that I haven't like continued and I'm on top of it and I've got all the sources and you know I can just put my finger on the button and say go to this person go to this person use this person as a uh, you know as a reference they're not going to steer you wrong whether it's right or left you know if I can't even keep track of the left I get somebody conservative wise that's asking me all of a sudden well, uh, what do you think about this? And they're using all this conservative stuff and all their blogs and all their news sources, short of Fox News, to tell me, track this or track this or, you know, why, don't, why aren't you listening to Rush Limbaugh or, you know, that kind of stuff. Man, I've, I've left that in the past. So I guess I basically am, I'm looking for an out, but I don't really want to have an out you know i'm spreading myself too thin possibly i gotta come up with an answer here well what 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 is the thing that really that really burns your ass what is the one thing that is that is what you focus on right now that's what that's what you focus on right now and then when something else burns your ass that's what you focus on i mean that's the way i you know i'm looking at it i don't want to if I'm going to go on camera, I don't want to become too myopic. I'm, I'm a little different. I have to, you know, I have to diversify a little because I don't want to bang the drum like daily. Well, but, you're oriented, Dave. I don't find you to be that way at all. Well, I could, I could be, <laughs> but well, I don't want to be. When you say myopic, that's what I, that's how I translate that. Well, I don't want to be, you know, like HA was criticized, you know, to, Seth, Seth Rich, like every single day for three months. But he know. is diversified. He no longer only types in caps. He has diversified. Oh, he doesn't type in caps anymore. I'm, Not I'm on Twitter. I'm I see both. I see both. <laughs> it was kind of a joke, but yeah. So I was looking into that Missouri Republican who who you know committed the apparent suicide and. The stories are different than I remember them being back in 2015 on all the main MSM uh, websites. So I remember in 2015, the thing is that he was an auditor for the, who had just won the second term for, for (laughs) and, and he was so, and so he was aware of like all this corruption because of being an auditor, you know, he was going to do an audit of the government and everything. And, uh, he he was, and, uh, all of these, all of these, uh, articles, Instead of talking about the part where he said that he had, you know, uh, that he can clean out Washington and had, you know, information on it, all of the articles now say that uh, the thing he was calling about was anti-Semitic comments that Republicans had supposedly said about him, and he was going to tell them about all these anti-Semitic, like he was going to, you know, officially allege the Republicans who was running against him of making anti-Semitic comments against him, and then that, and then he killed himself, but. Uh, yeah, they've gotten rid of a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that said that he was, you know, invest that he uh, wanted to do an audit on the state's corruption, and uh, you know, and they got rid of some of the stuff that said just how apparent uh, this stuff was because, like, everyone who said that you know, they knew him were like really surprised, you know, because he had he had had an audit of munis- of the, the 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 courts in Ferguson, you know, like the ones that that were robbing the black people of the community. No. Like, and you know, and he and he was doing that with the Democrats. Like he was like being a fair, honest, like auditor, and he was like looking through their records and finding all of this corruption. And he had a lot to say. And then all of a sudden, boom, he supposedly kills himself. And his wife's like, "Oh my God, I'm shocked." I'm, uh, you know, he doesn't. It, he never seemed like this before. But I just heard a gunshot in the next room, and now and there he was. Wow. I was just envisioning somebody just like getting shot. And- you know, and maybe not having the closest or the tightest relationship with their most significant other, so they weren't sharing some of that stuff. And man, well, I just you know, know, reading her quotes on CNN, it makes me wonder, like, if she was, if because like she, she kind of like the what she says in here, it makes it seem like she's going along with the whole narrative of he killed himself, like really easily, like for all the shit he was involved in. I think that it would be hard for anyone to think that their husband would just kill up and kill themselves. Like, you know, right. and, and, yeah. and, and in this article, she's like, 
she was like saying that he was on the phone. And then the next thing she knew, she heard a gun, a gunshot. And, you know, if he's on the phone, why would he shoot himself? Like she, you know, she, she makes it sound like she honestly believes it was a suicide, but at the same time she says she didn't see it. And that he was on the phone a few minutes before calling for the press to come over. Is, uh, is she involved in government herself? His wife? Uh, it does not say in the sounds, CNN. Sounds very House of Cards-ish to me. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, I just watched a, uh, I, I just watched the new, uh, the latest episode of the X Files last week, and it seems like it was somewhat similar to the X Files. Oh, okay, no spoilers. I'm not going, no I'm not going to any spoilers. Evan. <laughs> <laughs> Ebon's like, I watch X Files. No, I don't want to hear this. Don't, yeah. don't, don't. I only saw the first episode of the new season. It's about, they're about five in now. Okay. Jonathan's really Luke's uncle, not his dad. <laughs> How's fatherhood going, Chad? Uh, pretty awesome. I'm digging it. <laughs> Is that a hospital gown? It looks like a hospital gown. That's yeah, supposed to be. No, no, I have, oh. I have a V neck oh. on, and this is a little bib and whatnot. Oh, okay. It did look like a hospital though, until he said he's got a V neck on, and then I went, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, See, Rebel is, Rebel's in the layers, so she knows what to look for. I That's am because cool. it gets hot and then it gets cold in this house. But it did. <laughs> Yeah, it's, from that angle, man, it looked like a hospital gown. I was like, I understand. It's a, ma- uh huh. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a dad. We're just, <laughs> we're just busting you up, man. We're we're enjoying looking at the baby. I'm I'm enjoy showing her off. Thank you. I have to see her every time. This is my my little girl. My little girl. Look at that hair. I yeah. forget how small they are. I know, right? Yes. So, Chad, um, you getting any sleep? Um, I'm getting a little more sleep than uh, my girl is. Yeah, yeah. You guys got a schedule yet? Uh, well, I mean, she's she's kind of she's kind of on it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm kind of doing the work, so I gotta. Is like one of you like a heavy sleeper, light sleeper kind of thing? Uh, I mean, I'm, I pass out pretty easy she, and she's a good baby. She passes out really good too. Like, so. so she sleeps, she sleeps for hours at a time. Or? Um, we, we probably feed her every, every couple hours and she's a month early. So we're just trying to yeah, keep know, get her, yeah. get her up. So she's been gaining weight and, you yeah. know, finishing her bottles and stuff. So Yvonne, did I cut you off during that uh, conversation we were having a few minutes ago about VR? Yeah all the time but it's okay you're the new kevin <laughs> I'm trying. Today, today i'm the new kevin hey what's a good uh webcam is that logitech i would like, say logitech is what i'm using yeah logitech's really good i mean the it's um the, the logitech brios the the highest end you don't really need that unless you really want 4k or 60 frames per second for 1080p Below that is a, is a Logitech C932, I think. There's below that is 920, uh, nine, uh, shoot, nine, no, wait, 930. Uh, I forget. There's a couple <laughs> that are good. But all you need is. gave me this one that I'm using, yeah. and I am happy. I mean, it's, I'm so grateful for him. What kind is it? C922X. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and then wow. there's... It does it everything. Really good. It looks really good, Rebel. Your, your, uh, yeah, your stuff looks good. You look bright. You're well lit there. Yeah, and I'm in low light. I mean, it's my um, laptop computer thingy doesn't even do that. The same, Yvonne? Are you using the same thing? No, I use the Brio. There's, um, there's another one that I use that's slightly less it's like probably the second highest of the logitech then there's a couple of others for logitech that are that are good i mean there's Dave, Dave, I mean, are, basically the the lowest end i would go for logitech is c920 and those you could probably buy for like 35 dollars on sale i think now oh uh, they're like 50 bucks on amazon 
Okay, Dave, what are you using? Cause yeah, but on sale, you, you can see them on like for 35 bucks. I was looking for the uh, model number, but uh, yeah, it's, a Logi- it's a Logitech. Yeah. Because Chad, yours is real clear too, but it's black and white. Well, I'm, I'm just using, you know, the in my laptop. It's a right. Dell, whatever. The Dell? Yeah, whatever yeah, it was in a couple years old. It's, it's not bad, man. It's not bad. Mm-mm. Yeah, I want to get I want to get something more clear because I got this building ready, so I'm I'm about to start pumping out content soon. So I'm like, that's what I've been amping up everything. So. So have you have you considered yet, uh, Chad? Are you moving over to Steam it? Am I going to go over there? Yeah, I'm thinking because they do have a video platform over there. If you didn't know. Uh no, I mean I I plan on on all as many platforms as possible. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, taking taking the clips, cutting them up and put them on. I mean everything. You know, it's it's that's the whole idea is to is to hit hit them hit everybody. You know, you just put it you just put it in that format that that, that they that they take. I mean, I, I've been waiting I've been waiting for my confirmation for almost a month along with Fly. We put in for it the same day, I think, January the eleventh. Um, I actually reapplied a few days ago so i'm going to uh i'm going to uh go on in another steam it i'm going to go on in another week yeah are you kidding i only waited two days it's taken forever i waited like three days two two, three days i'm telling you it's i got the email confirmation it's just it's the last step and I didn't get I didn't get anything. Yeah, so, mine went in too. I got the confirmation email the next day, and then they sent me the confirmation that I was in on the yeah, next day. What's weird got- there? The only thing that's kind of would, would seem weird to me, and this is a security thing, because they're on uh, they're on blockchain over there. They're right. on, uh, you know, they're they're offering people uh, tokens, you know, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin equivalent. It's not actually Bitcoin. It's, you know, Ivan, what is it over there? It can be whatever you want it to be. Steam it coin is what I keep hearing, seeing it called. Yeah. So basically, uh, tokens are just another way to invest in it using other coins. Um, I don't know the details of, of how they do the tokens. I haven't set up my court. wallet yet. I haven't set up any of that yet. But yeah. The thing that I was, I, my point was, um, their their password is real long, and they won't allow you to use your own created password. You've got to use their long string. That's because too many were already getting hacked, and then they right. said, "Okay, because nobody knows." I mean, it takes a lot of effort to, you know, to do that. Um, what do you call it when you cha- when you resubmit to get it changed? Um, right. It it takes more of their work to offer that service. So instead of they didn't build it into their uh, their back end, then so I just hmm. announcement. It's like a th- no. it's like a twenty five thirty digit number. I have it saved. Okay, yeah. baby. Uh, announcement I just got approved for statement. Now that I <laughs> was bitching about it, I just I just went on like they a few heard hours. you. They yeah, heard, a, they a, heard few you. Hours, a few hours ago they just they just got so me guess on. Who so it was, guys. Guess yeah. what? Yeah. So Fly's got an in. Fly, you should check. Fly's got an in. See if he got Fly's got the in. Well, I, I reapplied and I like made a bunch of noise. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you know, maybe that's what you gotta do. I don't know. So, I'll see you. I'll see you over there then, Dave. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm actually gonna. Uh, I'm gonna shut down for a little bit and get on there and and see you know, and see what's going on and say hi and all that. Um, I'm at the um, what am I? Oh, at the rate uh, rebel K Traveler. Is that how what I am there? Steam it tech. It's probably too long because I couldn't do independent yeah. outsider. I had to do indie slash O. So. Um, yeah, no, I think I am at R- Rebel Cage Rattler. Oh, okay. Well, they wouldn't let me do. Maybe it was. Boy, they're just treating you horrible, huh? <laughs> yeah, they they know I'm a shit stirrer, so. Yeah, you, 
I don't know. Well, I, music, check, music. They were checking it out. They were they know they knew you worked for the post office, man. They were checking out. Uh, Okay. You know you can use that music, right? The Indiana Jones theme. What's that? I said you can use that the Indiana Jones theme because it's it's not copyrighted because it's what is it the it's an overture it's old. I can go. Da, 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 da. Oh, so NDO. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I like that. You were named after the dog. I think the only thing I don't like about steam it is I can't decorate it. You just yeah, there's that too. I want to decorate. I want to be able to change pictures and so um. But, um, but they do um. Some of the options on there are pretty interesting too, though. I mean, they do. If you're a little more technically oriented, they have markdown language. So instead of using like a regular editor, you, you would use Markdown language. It gives you a lot more flexibility in how you put up your posts and um, yes. how you do some of that stuff. So I'm going to look into Markdown language. I haven't. God, I hope Steam it just takes off and does well because I am so done with Twitter and I have been done with Facebook. There's just no. Got a lot oh. of. I think I think though to use um who's who has been used oh Dave. Dave Dave, was that you using the word myopic? Or was yeah. that the guest? That was me. So that was you? Yeah. I think there's still a lot of myopic people out there. Um I I want to I was gonna ask Yvonne um what other platforms are viable platforms, whether it be Vimeo or you know, I heard about viewable, I'm not sure about it. Um, I know you may be designing a platform. Um, what platforms are viable like right now? Vimeo? Um, I really like BitShooter, whatever that. Like, uh, oh, BitShoot. Uh, I, I haven't really looked too much, uh, to be honest. Uh, Steemit seems pretty good. Uh, they're live streaming. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's yeah. free, but it's got the 20 second delay the live chat isn't all too great okay uh, i mean but the for for free for being a live stream for free i mean there's youtube there's periscope there's youtube of course what's the limitation uh, on their chat Yvonne? Uh, basically um it's slow yeah so not only do the, does it from what what we're saying we're, we're pretty much right for like on Zoom, we're live, and when people are watching us on YouTube or Periscope, they see us maybe about four seconds, five seconds from what we're actually saying. They'll they'll see it or hear it five seconds later. Same with the text for the live chat. So on on Steam, it you it takes twenty seconds, and then when they type something in and they send it, that's an additional five seconds. So there's 25 seconds till after they type it, till it goes in. And also, yeah, and then also a person who's chatting live on the Steemit live chat, they can't send another message until after 20 seconds uh, from their previous submission. Oh, there's no way. Yeah. So there's still a lot of work that they need to do. Um, but... I think it's, and there's also a couple of other things like, for example, if you live stream um, through DLive, uh, you could see when someone's live streaming uh, on their Steemit page, on their feed. The only problem is after the feed ends, it's, you can't watch it again. So what you have to do is you have to down, you have to upload a copy of, of your video and specify it so people know that it's an upload and then they could watch it. So there's a, there's like a big diversion uh, divergent process from uh, actual live streams that were broadcast, which they can't watch anymore after it's ended. But uh, they can watch. Um, but how YouTube does it is after you stream, it processes everything, and then anyone can watch that live stream again if it's still made public. So is that a fe that's a feature then of what uh, YouTube? Right. No, no, no. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I was thinking about it again from the technical side of it. Uh, what 
their disk space on their cloud? Um, uh, I don't know. I've I haven't really spent time looking on Steam and everything. I didn't want to get I didn't want to get too deep into it. I was just thinking about it because it, you know, I was like, wow, you know, that's kind of there's a lot of deficiencies there with Steam it that I haven't really tested yet, and you know, I'm used to to Zoom and just the convenience of YouTube, but with you know, with so many people bitching about the demonetization over there, you know. Yeah, I don't really care about demonetization. It's more about the censorship. Um, the tech is better, and it sounds at this point like the tech is better for the person that's coming on and experiencing this and seeing the video, having to deal with talking in chat with delays and stuff. Uh, yeah, but there's alternatives. There's, there's short-term alternatives that you can always use. You can use, like for example, Discord or any type of chat service where – just direct your your viewers to go go use instead. Right. So that's one thing. Right. Uh, well, as, as far as as far as video goes, I wish there was a viable alternative to OBS. I really do. OBS is simple. Yeah. I, for whatever reason, <laughs> the, the thing with the with the with the with the video squares on mine. Whenever I, I've had the conversation with you before, whenever you screen share, my thing goes bats. I'm, I'm just so saying. What we, what we need to do is, I think, Yvonne, because we're the three of us are here, um, not now, but sometime soon. Mm -hmm. if, if you could find your way, I know you're doing a lot of stuff, man. And I hit you I up. Like time. Day, yep. I hit you up the other day on Twitter. Um, but I'm looking to get a little more familiar with, you know, OBS as well. And I can, I can do some of the testing myself because I've got multiple computers, mm -hmm. but like with what Dave is saying and with, you know, what rebel was saying, you know, James sometimes is in and out, you know, and it was almost like I saw it one night where it was like rebel was directing him to fix OBS. And I was like, so what Dave's saying kind of jives with, at least me for the few hours that I, you know, maybe the 10 plus hours that I've tried to work with OBS, I found it somewhat convoluted myself as well. It's very, very rarely do I have an issue, but when something occasionally like every once in a while with, with the audio, that one time with the audio, I was like, you know, it took me a minute to, to figure it out. It could be a little more user friendly. I'm not saying it's not that difficult to use once you get into the pattern, but yeah. when something happens, you kind of have to dig into it and find out which button. It's again, not about, yeah. Again, yeah. obviously the price is right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, it's it's not free, but it's for for the limited amount of money that I spend monthly, 15 bucks a month, it, it's not bad. And maybe, maybe, maybe that's something that I'm actually not looking at. Um, maybe if I had a paid version of it, it would be better. Maybe my the limitations one that I'm seeing. Well, I don't think it's about. Well, there's also. Um, <laughs> like I've been looking to paid live stream services like the cast and. Um, <laughs> Vimeo, I think, has started their own pay service live stream. I think so. Yeah, it's just that's a little too much right now. But uh, like for example, the cast has has it so you use a modified version, their version of OBS, so it's a lot more s straightforward. Okay, I mean things like that can happen. Um, you can easily. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's troubleshooting, like on your computer. If it doesn't work right, there's something wrong with it. Something got messed up. Um, like, Is it like you were saying you had to re-download your operating <laughs> system? No, um, I noticed an issue on Windows 7 and Windows 10. Okay. But um, like I, I knew I wanted to up, up to date, update to Windows 10 anyways from my main system to use Windows 10. I mean, you just, there's a lot of stuff that I disable on Windows 10, um, but I it was able to work. I didn't have to. I'm no longer 
fiddle around with it with Windows 7. And another Windows 10 uh, had an issue, and I had just troubleshooted it. It had to do with um, s- some of it had to do with like hardware acceleration issues. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of things that you have to do troubleshooting with it to pin it down. But sometimes it's just the build. Like but hardware, a, hardware acceleration there, Ivana, you're talking about with the with the uh, uh, graphics with the video. For the browser, yeah. Um, so certain browsers uh, use hardware acceleration, and that also messes with, with OBS. But it's also bugs. So it's not necessarily just hardware acceleration. It's just how OBS utilizes it. So certain builds, if you go back a couple builds, might fix uh, certain things, especially Windows 7, but it might still have other bugs, which, of course, the newer versions fix. So it's okay, kind so of a trade-off. Across the board. Across the board, just real quick, um, OBS better with Windows 10 than with Windows 7? I'd say yes. All right. Uh, that pretty much answers my question on that. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's also other stuff. Like if you really care about the chat or like um, I know Susie D and um, Elizabeth Voss, they they look through the chat and they want to see it. And what Crocker2 does is they copy it and paste everything that happens live chat and paste it into another uh, thing. Uh, but if you if they just used restream.io and then had Windows um, machine and then they they logged into uh, restream.io and set it up with the Windows restream.io chat, they can get all of their, their chat info into one log. And so uh, they don't have to do all that copy paste work but the thing is, I think they both use Macs, so that that may not work uh, unless they give someone else like their login info. There's a little bit of disconnect, yeah, between the hardware platforms. Very interesting. Yeah. I, there's the thing is, I think a lot of people try to focus on. I mean, of course, keeping it simple is is awesome for a lot of people who aren't tech savvy. But until someone comes up with the perfect situation, that's not that's not going to happen. Right. You kind of have to mix right. what? I was just going to say real quick, we have to mix apples and oranges because we're always pretty much going to have Apple in the house. We're going to have, uh, you know, uh, Intel, Windows-based machines in the house. Yeah. Not, yeah, uh, the, the type of processor doesn't matter what type of operating system, but yet. Yeah, I know I get your point. It's um, operating system is well yeah. Made. You're going to need to use different. I mean, it, right now, technology and the platforms that are being built are just ramping up really fast now because people are trying to get away from censorship. They're at, like platforms being created to to allow uh, censorship not to happen at the corporate or government level, or so it's decentralized types of stuff so that's good those are things we don't have to worry about other people are doing it we just have to watch out how it's being funded and who actually is doing it but um oh um i'm trying to keep up but yeah it, and then it, here is fantastic yeah and then it's just trying to get people like real journalists real uh, reporters, uh, com- commentators, and get them up to speed with technology because they're not necessarily fluent in technology. There's certain, like Fly is really good at it. Um, I feel like I'm okay at it. So other people who are okay at it, um, they need to just find ways to to get people up to date on it. And um, a lot of videos, and, and it's tough because you really need to update like almost every month. Give one... That's what I want to probably start doing at the beginning of every month. Do one feed, just kind of up to date on the current type of like video platforms, um, chat platforms, uh, blog platforms, all that stuff. It's given up. Yes, yeah. And and any pertinent types of updates that that people would would should be doing or need to do, um, because even tutorials. Right. Some of these tutorials that people can watch about how to use OBS, they're going to be outdated about six months a year 
So it's totally different than, than what you see if you're trying to manipulate it. And plus, um, they don't show you the difference between a Mac and Windows or maybe even a Linux version of it. So, yep, yep. I mean, that's we, we really haven't done a lot of that, you know, in and amongst, you know, the activist circle that we're traveling in. You know, yeah. it's pretty much been, hey, it's browser based, go on to YouTube. You know, you can pretty much do this, this, and this. Um, you know, we're pretty much able to handle this, you know, pretty well, pretty, pretty, pretty fast. You know, whether we're using Windows, whether we're using Macs, you know, yeah. you know, it doesn't really seem to matter. But I think with some of these details and whatnot, with the different platforms and whatnot, like it's going to take a while. If we're thinking that we're all going to move over to Steam it, and with what you're just describing, Yvonne, that's unacceptable over there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll improve. So as my time goes is, by, my point is, and I and I'm I'm saying it's uh, unacceptable over there right now. It's going to improve. It's got to improve, uh, mm -hmm. or their or their uh, or the steaming is not going to um, it's not going to weather any kind of storm. Well, well gonna... steaming as as far as an upload platform where you upload videos, I th and make make um so for, for for example um youtube for example youtube will or periscope they'll take the, or youtube they'll take down videos so no one can watch it so where do you put it so uh you can put it on vimeo you can put uh but then you pay a price especially for space or you put it on steam it where it's free and steam it they won't take it down they can't take it down once it's up it's up so the good thing about that is, you know how sometimes you go to certain articles that are written and they'll have links to tweets and they'll have links to YouTube videos. But then once those YouTube videos and tweets are gone, if you click on a link, it says could not find a page, right? So at least with Steam it, if you write an article and you're linking it to a video, especially it doesn't matter where, but if it's a Steam it video, it's always going to be there. Yeah. So yeah. That's that's the plus. So you got to look at the long term pluses uh, versus the short term uh, minuses. So I think. So, yeah. No, I, I think that's really I think that's a good point, because, again, and what they've done over there, they've kind of like separated a little bit. That's why when I was looking at it, I was like, because they're actually it's it's D live. I think they refer to it. They call it D live over mm -hmm. there, the streaming aspect. And then I think their um, like upload video part of it, it's called D D tube. So oh, I, I didn't know about that one. I've already used D tube, you know, I was using D tube and I was like, and then I was checking out D live and it was like, but I can do basically the same thing on D live that I can do on D tube. So yeah. But as far as being able to say this stuff and having the price be right, for a lot of us, that is the critical factor. Yep. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's there, there's a lot of a lot of stuff to look at, and so there's big likelihood I'm working for myself by at the end of April or May, um, or April, uh, March or April. So that gives me more time to basically spend 12, 12 hours doing stuff during the daytime and at night for video content, video uh, editing, uh, live streams, uh, tutorials, plus just other stuff, not just the stuff that we do. Just videos that I want to make, uh, tutorials. Uh, Good. Other stuff, but, you know, this is like the civic duty part, like, if I if I decide to monetize stuff like this, news commentating, activist stuff, that should always be free. Information should always be free. Uh, there should be no charge on that. There are other people who, you know, of course you need to support certain people where it's like a Patreon. Um, but I feel like uh, uh, like Newsbud, they do they do some great articles and news snippets. It's all, but, pay, it's all paywall, man. Yeah, you can only watch it you only get to see the previews on the YouTube page, but if you go, 
through their Patreon and you donate whatever, then you get it. But I feel that's that's the wrong approach. When when vital information needs to get out there, it should be access to accessible accessible for anyone and everyone. And it um, it's an arrangement that they have. You know, I yeah. know a year year and a half ago when I was getting back into Sybil Edmonds and one, and I realized that she was still around. I realized that uh, she runs a lot of that operation out of uh, her home, her house over there in Bend, Oregon. Yeah. And, uh, but that whole news, but organization and whatnot for a while there, they were trying to make it free. Yeah. I mean, they, they didn't get enough donations. They, they had to go back to, you know, uh, a yeah. donation, uh, you know, a more PayPal, excuse me, PayPal. And, and, PayPal and I, and I get it. And, and it's, it's hard. It's a hard market because you've got people who've got more views, who've got more explosive uh, content, right. like very clickbaity. They're going to get a lot more views. They're going to get a lot more donations. They're going to get their pluses and minuses on both sides of it. Right. Yeah. So my thought was uh, information, all this stuff that's important. That's like a civic duty type of stuff free. But all the other content that I do, whether it's fishing, whether it's uh, uh, tutorials, whether it's um, uh, reviews, whether it's um, training, all that stuff will be uh, like pay based, like Patreon or subscription based. Well, that, but, that's the other aspect, too, of Steam it that has me somewhat interested Mm-hmm. Because I'm basically doing this open, what I do, what little that I do, you know, being kind of a Twitter, Twitter Jackie. Yeah. Um, the thing that's interesting about Steemit is they are monetizing everyone. Yeah. Uh, but it's small monetization. You're not going to get a lot of monetization unless you've got a lot of support. So anyone who's small or ousted, they're not going to get a lot of money. Oh, and I agree. I agree, themselves. but it's it's still that model. Yeah. You know? And like, there are ways probably to get around it because they're talking about whales and that kind of thing. But yeah. boy, when I see some articles and whatnot over there on Steemit, and they're worth the article, the content itself, has got like seven or eight hundred dollars on it. And, yeah. Know, their tokens. That's that's some pretty good. That's a good chunk. Yeah, uh, and and we'll we'll see how it how it pans we'll see out. How that works. We'll yeah. see how that works long term. Yeah. And and it's it's also like um, like some people make these like uh, training videos. Uh, so James is up now live. He's going to do his mind to talk. So we're going to pretty much stop uh, for and move on over to his show. But I uh, just want to finish my, my thought when we can yeah. continue it on there. But it's um, like a lot of people do training stuff and it's free, but, you know, they get paid by YouTube and uh, all their advertising stuff because it's not. So they're compensated somehow, but we'll see how this works. Yeah, but the thing is what we're doing, we can't get compensated by activism. Do you see? So. Yeah, in, in in a sense, I do see because you know I've only been on I've only been on over at Steam, it, you know, and I've only got like three or four posts, and you know they they've got like maybe thirty cents, forty yeah. cents, something like that. So maybe activism over there isn't necessarily going to be it. So if you do go over there, it's like you got to figure out a way to put up some content. And yeah. if you never do do that. You know, it might be a way to. Uh, at least get a little bit of monetization yeah it, you almost have to kind of share share the well like i mean that's where civic duty is is a thing because you don't get money out of civic duty and if you are you're not really doing it because of a sense of duty no, no it's out of your heart man <laughs> yeah exactly so you kind of have to if someone gets big like if i get big fishing with tutorials training because i'm going to do a lot of like street fighting tutorial training stuff as well nice um, and nice. Defense, whether it's using you know weapons guns uh hand-to-hand whatever um so that's going to be part of it um it's going to be you know not just computer stuff uh not just fishing and hunting um but uh like just uh 
so story like concepts, uh, maybe even some actual like uh, photography, movie type of um, so you're like storyboards and just kind of entertainment. Nebraska, right? hmm? Nebraska you're moving to? That was cool. Yeah. Part. So you're yeah. moving to Nebraska. So then we'll be able to probably sometime in the near future, we'll probably be able to see you with uh, what some uh, some cams on some cornfields. Uh, they don't really have cornfields. Cornfield cams. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I might have like well outdoor live cam, just twenty four seven type of thing. Yeah. You know, maybe pointed at a cornfield. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> at night, you, you might be able to see squirrels and yeah, rabbits and maybe s s some grazing deer, uh, coyote or two. I mean, like. You basically have to rewind and catch it happening, but you know some of those actually get get big. Like there's one where uh, like a public night cam or something caught like a fox and owl interaction in the snow. So, I mean, it's not getting, people aren't going to learn anything from it. They're just going to be entertained animal enough to. Planet, it's animal planet. Yeah, and I I love the animal stuff. So I I'd, I'd love to just. Not even hunting, not even just or fishing. Just go out there and film just wildlife interaction stuff. Cool. Cool. So, uh, okay. Uh, the sound and the visual video part is not synced right now. Huh? James? Oh. No, I can, I'm watching, watching you talk. And the audio is just a tad behind. You mean on Zoom or on YouTube? Zoom. Oh. No, it, it, it might looks, be. It looks pretty straight up to me. Yeah, it looks good here. It just might be your system. You might need a reboot, Amanda. Again. Yep. All right. So we're gonna. I'm gonna end it here, guys. We'll head over to James. At mm -hmm. Ryan, I don't know you now. Dot com. I'll, I'll take a look into it. All right. I'll see you guys there.